Hi, good morning, New York. How are you? I'm Dorothea Mercuri, and this is the podcast of Growing Up Italian. What's up, everybody? This is the Growing Up Italian podcast. And today we have a very special guest, Dorothea Mercuri, model, actress, and now cook. Italian cook, Italian only cook. Italian. <laughs> what, what else are we going to add to this? You're, you're a woman of many mysteries. Like, well, the cooking, the cooking situation is really like, you know, how we all cook. I mean, Italians, we all cook, right? You cook, yeah. right? A little bit. I only cook when I get paid. Oh, that's interesting. Because, because I, my family owns a sandwich shop. Oh, nice. In, I love sandwiches. Yeah, in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. So at home, I don't like to cook because I make a mess. I know. My kitchen is a mess every time I cook. It's like a disaster afterwards. I have to paint the walls, you know? <laughs> like sprays of like spraying of tomatoes sauce, sauce everywhere yeah all over the wall i have like a little like bucket of like paint white paint so that i can repaint it because are it you doesn't serious yeah and i'm mm. like oh i've got to paint the wall now <laughs> but yeah cook because we are in the we are actually you know my family mercury family uh, we are in the cooking industry i mean my grandfather giuseppe he was the first one to bring ice cream in our village in the thirties. In Calabria? In Calabria, yes. And then- uh, Gelato, he, gelato. Gelato, gelato, real gelato. And uh, his brother made also gelato. So one family member had one square gelato shop and then they started making, you know, with time goes by, they started making desserts and, you know, like, uh, when you say, when you say he brought, he brought gelato to Calabria, you're saying like he went to the North, saw it and then made it in the South. He came from Sicily. He went to Sicily, saw oh. it because we see Sicily from our balconies. We really? South, yeah, we are on the coast. It's beautiful where I come from. It's called Nicotera. And uh, actually, I have to make a little like, I have to tell you something. Tropea, mm -hmm. you know, you also, I think, put it on Instagram. It's the Borgo of 20, 2021. It, it won as the most beautiful Borgo, which is the most beautiful antique village of 2021, Tropea is very close to my village. We are from the coast. It's beautiful sea and deep blue water. It's one actually of the most beautiful coastlines in Italy. And uh, my grandfather went to Sicily and he came back and, you know, he was making gelato, you know, they would put it in, in ice cream buckets. Mm -hmm. It had huge pieces, like rocks of ice. I, I was gonna say, how did he keep it refrigerated in the 30s? Like, did they have a freezer? Isn't that insane? Yeah, my, my, uh, my family explained it to me. They just had to have ice, like huge rocks of ice. And in the middle, then they would put the bucket with the ice cream that they would make by hand, you know, and then this would become like hard inside the ice and they had to cover it with like special, it was, they didn't even have a fridge. And you know, uh, my whole family, my father is the first of eight kids. Mm -hmm. They all grew up with this business. I mean, they wow. went to university with this business, you know, they, eight kids, you know, and my grandmother, Dorotea, I got, you know, my name from her, she would go to work. With that's, a, that's a real, that's a real Italian thing right there, being named after your nonna. Of after, course. You know, like, I'm named after my nonna. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. 
That's so sweet. Yeah, and especially because I was the first of 23 yeah. first cousins. Oh, wow. And they had to, you know, all work at home because my grandmother was helping my grandfather making the business bigger. And then the bar became like the center of, you know, where people would meet in the village and where people would, you know, sit outside and talk. And I, I mean, I grew up sort of like living around this uh, pastry food. shop. Yeah, food, food, like food and sweets and desserts at the beginning and then we were great cooks uh, and we would cook you know on Sundays we would eat like 20-25 people all together and these are the memories that kept that's me the best. going that's it's the best. so beautiful yeah so it's just so what made you want to start filming yourself cooking like was there a certain event that happened or Maybe you, you posted something and you saw like a lot of people really gravitated to it. Like what exactly made you want to like start showing your, your cooking? Well, what happened during the first lockdown, um, me and my family, we have a WhatsApp group. It's called family, not familia, but family in English. <laughs> They're really funny. And uh, uh, with my grandmother's, when fortunately she's gone three years ago, she left. I mean, she left when she was 92, so she had a great life. And uh, we would post uh, our foods, you know, like whatever we would make every day. Mm -hmm. Oh, we made the sugo, now we made ragu, and we would post our foods. And then this would just get us going at home and sort of like make, you know, like those horrible days in the house, especially when Italy was so beaten at the beginning, you remember. It was just like so heartbreaking to see it was the first country that really had it, yeah. you know, bad. Yeah, I, I remember when that happened for us because we were posting a lot of balcony stuff and it didn't really come to America yet. So everybody was watching Italy first, you know? Like doing, doing so well. And the balcony yeah. stuff, parentheses, the balcony stuff, my grandmother would always come out with a pan and like, you know, a spoon when carnival or whenever something hap was happening and she would oh. come out and she would bang, you know, her, uh, her pants. It's a, it's a thing. Anyways, and you know, this thing with, we were cooking and like exchanging recipes and it was kind of like, oh, this is what I did today. This is what I did. And then I was just like, why don't we just film this? Because it's really funny. And uh, I asked my daughter who I was, you know, in lockdown with Gaia, my other daughter, she's uh, in Amsterdam. She's at university. Oh, nice. And like Gaia, let's just, you know, film this. And then Gaia, she's very good at editing and she likes making little movies. And then we started, you know, just like putting our moments in the kitchen. And then this would give me like, uh, you know, a moment of like doing my job kind of, even though it's not really my job, but putting my makeup on and feeling mm -hmm. a little bit like there was something happening because it was hard. It kept, and it kept you going. Totally. I was like, I'm putting up a show by myself at home yeah. now. Exactly. I'll put my earrings on and my makeup. The beginning, you know, I was really laid back. I wasn't like so made up. And then I was like, oh my God, this is actually working. Why don't I just do it properly? Mm -hmm. And it saved my life. Cooking saved yeah. my life during those times. And it's still now, you know, we're not back to normal. No. So that's that's one thing I wanted to like explain to a lot of people because maybe some people that follow us don't really know how serious a lockdown is in Italy or Europe. Like I don't think we've ever experienced a real lockdown in America. Like everyone stopped working for two weeks, a month, some people six months, you know. But you you just said before during the first lockdown. So how many lockdowns are you guys like up to? Uh, you're saying the first, like, you yeah, the third, this is right? the fourth, the fourth. Third, third, and this one now, since a few weeks, is the fourth. Yes. Now, when you say lockdown, you basically can't leave the house unless it's for groceries. 
Yeah, you have to just, uh, you know, send like, uh, have a declaration form and fill it up online that you're, you know, you're leaving the house uh, because you need to go, you know, either to work, some people work uh, or go out with your dog or, or just go to the supermarket. And I got stopped by the police two days ago with my kids. I mean, there's a, there's, oh, a, there's a, what, what did the police like ask for, for a your, the declaration of like where you're going? They were like, did you send the message? Cause it's like, we do it through SMS. Text? Oh, through text. A text. Okay. Yeah, we do it now through text. There's like a- That is sign. crazy. <laughs> In America, this does not exist, everybody. I'm really? Sorry. Yeah, no way. Yeah. In America, it's to... like, during the lockdown, it was like, if you need to get out of the house, go to the park, <laughs> you know, like- Right. You but know, a lot of, uh, I mean, now I have to be honest with you, a lot of people are out. I mean, I yeah, just- A lot of people are fed up now at this point. They cannot handle it anymore. And I understand, but the numbers are high because we're not getting vaccinated like yeah. you guys. Yeah, in Italy, I know. I talk about this a lot on, uh, on Clubhouse. I don't know if you have Clubhouse. Yeah, I love Clubhouse. So, oh, I'm going to follow you. Yeah, you got to follow us. We, we always host rooms and- it's crazy, like, hearing the perspective of, like, what you guys are going through. Even Canada, a lot of people in Canada. But to get, to get back more about you, a little bit about your background, being that your family's originally from Calabria. You spent a lot of time in Torino, right, you were saying? I, I was born in Torino because my father was uh, working at the time there. You know, we belonged to that uh, generation where we had to move from the south. Mm -hmm. Either come to the States or, or go, go to Canada north. or go North Italy to get a job. Yeah. Or like some people even do Germany, Switzerland, or. Now know. we do Switzerland and Europe. Now it's more yeah. about going to Europe, you know, but in the, you know, two generations ago, they would come to the States. And I have family that, you know, is in Argentina or is in the United States and family members that we don't even know where they are because- You spent some time in the States too, you were telling me, right? Yeah, I was, I was um, you know, after I left uh, Italy and we came back to Greece, my mom brought us to Greece when I was about a teenager. And then I came to New York once because my dad really loved New York and he brought me to the movies and, you know, when I was little and uh, I, you know, I knew all about American classics and musicals. And uh, he was a passionate, you know, and um, I came to New York once and then I said, that's it, that's it. I feel at home here. I am going to move to New York if I ever go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I came to study and work, of course. I was working, I was studying. I got papers right away. I remember in 94, it was my first time. Um, it's easy for a model to get papers. They're like, no problem, here you go. I was, yeah, I was, I had a really good book and you know that they're, they're smart enough to catch you and make you work there. So and at the time it was, it was doable. And I end up staying there for about 15 years. Uh, my kids are born in New York. And actually, so they're, so they're citizens. Your kids are, are citizens. My, my kids are citizens, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're, they have double citizenship and uh, their father's. So if they ever want to come back to America, they can. You gave them that option. They are so lucky. Yeah. And I said to them, you know, if you ever need, uh, you know, a different type of you know life and you want to experience something different you can go like either to new york or either to you know california they like the california los angeles people. right now california is doing so well and it's a very nice sustainable state as well which i like yeah. and uh, so it's 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 great i always thought that this this would be you know like my kids need to have that luck because of what I was going through to get my papers all the time I had to renew the papers and then I would hear people being you know in so much drama in order to like move there and uh, they can they can go and they, they they also got help from the government through the virus as American citizens oh, which wow. I find nice yeah Oh, that's great. Yeah, I find it 
nice. I find it nice. And uh, I find it that it's, uh, it's nice. You have a nice, a good passport that you might want to use at some point. The thing is that when I was living in New York, I was living in Little Italy. Isn't that funny? A lot of action down there. <laughs> so crazy and uh, what I loved about it was the products I could get you know like at yeah. the Paolo's that was my grocery store it still exists what's it called the Paolo's yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard of it I don't know it, it is still open you sure it's on Elizabeth it used to be on Elizabeth and Brown Street yeah I'm, I'm not too familiar I've heard the name before Oh, it's so good. They have a lot of, they have a lot of, st they still have like those specialty shops. I'm sure it's not like it was when, you know, Little Italy first started, but it's good to see that we still have something, you know? Something. Yeah, I know. It's very small, Little Italy. Because but... a lot of people say the real Little Italy in New York City is Arthur Avenue in the Bronx. Yeah. Yeah. So like, it's always like a, an argument, you know? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. This, a lot of people from New York say, like, the real Little Italy's are 18th Avenue and Bensonhurst or Arthur Avenue. But, yeah, I mean, listen, wherever, wherever there's, like, Italian products, you know, I enjoy it, you know? I it's love it. And I also love that place on, uh, on 6th Avenue, Cinterella, what was that called? Anyway, it's full of Italians and Italian products. And my butcher was on Sullivan Street and he's still open. He's called Pino's. Pino's, okay. Near the church on Sullivan Street in Soho. It's amazing he, he could keep the place because when you walk in there, it's really like a old fashioned butcher the places I know are like Aleva cheese, you know, the Aleva cheese. Aleva place. cheese, yes. Place, um, yeah. Like the Cannoli King, John, uh, Johnny. Uh, and then there's this guy, Ernie, that sells um, all these products right across the street from Aleva. Like he sells like these obscure Italian things like the Garnicellos and uh, soccer jersey. It's it's insane what um he sells there, but that's what I really love about Little Italy. You still have that authenticity there, you know. Yeah, and in New York in general, yeah. even Brooklyn. I mean, all over New York, it's like there's so much Italian imprint that when I moved there, I was like, okay, here I feel like I'm at home. Yeah. Yeah, that's important. I felt like I could, you know, I What's could... your, What was your first impression on like New York Italians though? Well, they, you know, you guys really look a lot like my cousins and my family of origin, even like, and my first film movie, I remember today, I was like, I have to tell him my first like lead part in a movie, an independent film I got booked because the director is Italian American, Frank Rainoni. Okay. And um, it was filmed and, in Italy or here? No, there in Brooklyn. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. yeah okay. It was called "And She Was." It was a small independent film, but I, the director was Italian American, and of course, when we met, he was like, "You're the one," you know. Uh, I what I like about the the Italian Americans, you know, I, first of all, there, there's a huge history on how your ancestors got there, which is like insane what they had to go through, right? My, my, um, my family came in the seventies, like not, not Ellis Island, but it's, it's crazy. Like the different stories you hear of like the struggle and, you know, how we had to adapt from Italy. You know? I mean, that's like hardcore. Yeah, it's and crazy. It's crazy. And the pain of, you know, not being able to speak Italian because you would not be accepted, right? Because I heard all those stories when I was living there. I've seen documentaries. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, you have, uh, you, you have all these beautiful movies that you know this is our history this is this is what happens to us by being italian and not only italian south italian because yeah, i'm sure our italian family, especially. southern italian especially we're still struggling as southern italians yeah 
we're still not anywhere close. That's why, we're, that's why we're all over the world, you know? Exactly. Where is your family from originally? Salerno. Salerno. Oh, yeah. Campania, oh, yeah, yeah. The Campania region. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I, I've been to Italy 30 times. So I went to like every summer in my life, pretty much. It's so beautiful. That whole coast. Yeah. It oh, really is. God. I want to spend a little more time in Italy, maybe when... You know, I'm a little older. My kids are a little older. I want to like really enjoy Italy, you know, especially I, with everything going on with this page, you know. This page is doing so well. Yeah, thank you. It, I actually have a funny story for everybody. The reason, one of the reasons why we met was because we made a meme of a picture of you. And then I think Christy was like, this is my friend. And then we were messaging and we're like, sorry, we didn't know. We just saw like this beautiful woman and we made a meme. I, I forgot what it was, but it was like Italian women are the best because whatever, whatever. Because they passed all the time. And yeah. they, something about the pasta. Because everybody says, why are you so thin? And you eat Oh, because so I think it was a, would have played a pasta, right? Like, you, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh I, I eat pasta and uh, okay, I'm not like lean, com I, I have my, 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 I, I, you know, I eat pasta, you can see that. I'm not sort of like worked out uh, woman all the time, but I just say, just eat a little bit, eat a little bit. Don't yeah. eat too much. Yeah. Don't make like a big plate. Yeah, just don't. Eat half a portion of what you're supposed to be eating mm -hmm. and don't don't avoid like having that pleasure because what is life without pasta honestly yeah what um i mean since that you really spent time in america too i think a big thing is that in italy i feel the ingredients are a little more simple like in america like you'll see pasta with chicken on top you know all these creams and oh, this, meatballs and meatball you know like in italy You'll see like the meatballs and the, you know, the ribs, like, you know, on Sunday. I don't know if Italy, it's as big like Sunday sauce. I think it's just regular all the time. Like this is how we cook, you know, but over here, it's so big. The portions, I feel like when you're eating, it's like a big plate of pasta. And then you said throw two meatballs. Us personally, like we eat the pasta, maybe there'll be one meatball and then there's a bowl with all the meats from the sauce, like yeah. the ribs, the brajol, the meatballs, you know? That's better. That's yeah. better. Well, it's a way, I think, because during, you know, the times, hard times, uh, the South Italians that left and had to, you know, like sort of make it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And there was a moment that everybody was just, thriving with food right and they were just like we're gonna put the pasta together with the meat now because they went through hunger yeah right i i feel like like i said from just like talking to so many people because of this page what a lot of people say and i want to get your opinion on it is when italian immigrants especially from the south that were so poor then they came to america and they have access to all this meat. That's how like spaghetti and meatballs, because they're like, exactly. we never had this before, you know, like. I get it, I understand that. And uh, it's a recipe. I mean, we do spaghetti with uh, little meatballs. It's just that our meatball spaghetti, they have little meatballs, you know, so that you sort of see them. Scattered around. Scattered around a little bit. There's not so much meat. The Italian, the Italian one will be, the American one will be like one meatball. Exactly. <laughs> it's just like a different portion because I understand when you've been through hunger and suddenly you're, you're like you, you said it, it's so right. Access to meat and good meat, right? And then they're just like, oh, we're gonna just have a party here, and uh, and that's where it comes from. I don't really like the spaghetti with the chicken, though. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. The only the only time I'll have pasta with chicken is like if it's a pesto sauce. Right. Like you know, like let's say uh, you tried hoey pasta before. 
whole wheat. Yeah, you, do you like whole wheat pasta? Or oh, no? yeah, yeah, I like whole wheat pasta. Yeah, kinds like uh, grana, right? Sí, integrale. Yeah, integrale. Integrale, there you go, there you go. So like whole wheat pasta with pesto and grilled chicken, like that's not the, that's not even healthy. Like, I don't know why we think it is, but there's like a, like a month I was eating that like three times a week. But uh, the pesto is good, though. The pesto is good. The yeah. pesto is good. Well, there are some recipes that today I'm making a lemon pie, but what happened is I found that the crust is Italian underneath. It's how we make it in Italy for the all the crostate or for the pastiera. And on top, I'm doing the American traditional cream, lemon cream, because oh, nice. it's like with no milk it's kind of like with lemon and water and sugar and i was like oh this is an italian american recipe and it's just it's just amazing how it came out the thing is that i i don't really do the chicken with the pasta and i don't really i don't think people should eat that because it's not italian yeah. you know yeah. and then there's the pizza with pineapple right <laughs> It's a big thing. We make a lot of fun of the pizza. Yeah. We've been doing videos on TikTok every day about it. My cousin, my cousin Azadi did like three videos about pineapple pizza. We do it to like make fun and just have fun with the page, you know? But what do you feel about like chicken parmesan and like fettuccine Alfredo? Cause that's like, there's people that aren't Italian by any means. And then Sometimes I'll tell them, like, you know, chicken parm is like not a real Italian dish, right? And they're like, no way. You know, because some of my friends that aren't Italian that grow with are like, what's the best chicken parm in the city? You know, like, oh they have those kind of talk. I'm like, listen, chicken parm, like, don't get me wrong. The ingredients, it's good. Like, I've had it before, but it's not really a traditional Italian dish. So I wanted to get your opinion. I, you know what, I get upset with everywhere, you know, that they change the recipes, but they do it everywhere. In France, they do it. Mm -hmm. They do it. They put like cream on a sauce with clams. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, isn't that insane? I cannot handle that. And, but they do it. It's a French way of making pasta. So the Americans have their own way of twisting you know, the recipes, the thing is that I, I want to I tell people, just keep it simple. Italian recipes are much more simple, much easier to make and lighter and lighter. Less ingredients too. Yeah, just three or four ingredients and you make the most beautiful pasta. Like on the garlic, for example, when they do the aglio e olio, okay? Americans, they chop the garlic and they fry a lot of garlic right just half of the portion of the garlic because that's too much garlic yeah it's, it's it's funny you're saying that about the garlic because sometimes we'll make jokes about you know how we love to use garlic and sometimes like from italy are like we know we don't use garlic i'm like you don't use garlic you use it but not as much you know yeah, it's like a clove of garlic for like four people. Yeah. Like and not garlic, chopped. Garlic bread in Italy doesn't even exist, right? I, it does exist. Let me tell you something. Because when you make a bruschetta, a real bruschetta, underneath, when you have the bread that comes out of the oven, uh -huh. then it's nice to like put a little bit of garlic on top the thing is that you don't put the butter people put oh yeah people put, yeah, yeah, people put butter on yeah i never thought of that because like you just put the garlic and the olive oil yeah that's it and and that's maybe it. like a little a little oregano or par parsley yeah, you put a parsley. oregano or whatever you have you have basilic or basil or a little bit of oregano with tomato but just what I say is use to my American, you know, friends that from La Cucina Italiana USA, I say just put half the dosage of garlic and try to keep it because garlic is heavy. 
So after you eat it, it's like really heavy on the body. Sometimes it makes you really tired if you eat garlic, a lot of garlic. Or even bu even butter is like super like that. I feel. Yeah, yeah. Because Americans cook butter with every like every American Italian dish contains butter, like chicken marsala, chicken frances. Uh, and it's like in Italy, I I never see butter except in mandeca, like the cheese with the butter in the middle, like that's the only time I've seen butter. Yeah, or you do butter when you do risotto. That's when you use butter. We have risotto recipe from the north of Italy. You know, in the south, we're not big on risotto. Uh, and also in the south of Italy, we don't really use butter because we like olive oil. The thing with the butter, I think, you know what it is? It's cheaper than the olive oil. So it became probably during hard yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. Like I, didn't, I didn't think of it. I didn't think of it like that, but it, it makes sense, actually. It does make sense. I never thought of it. But while I'm talking to you, I'm like, it's cheaper. Olive oil is expensive. But you know what? A, Just tub, of butter, a tub of butter is $3. Oil. A tub of butter is $3. A good bottle of virgin olive oil is like, 15 to 20 so exactly and i say guys just use olive oil use half a portion of olive oil don't use butter because it's healthier too you know it butter is. just it adds up butter i use butter for example to add up like a little bit on taste with some recipes but i'd never use it with uh, meat or with fish ever there's already so much going on it's so you know, oh, I can use butter, for example, if you, if you, for example, have a recipe with mushrooms, you can put yeah. a little bit of butter and I parsley. Guess risotto, risotto, mushrooms and butter. Exactly, or milanese, risotto milanese. There you have to use butter. And what I say is, you know, just, uh, it's, it's great because also Anthony Bourdain. Rest he in did, peace. Rest in peace, did, Anthony. Yeah, he did something that he said it, you know, there's a recipe of him on YouTube and he said, I'm not doing it the traditional Italian way, but I like to do it this way. And, and he sort of did his own recipe. I'm okay with everything, you know, but at the beginning, you know, I would get really upset. No, we don't do this in Italy. You know how Italians on YouTube, if there's a French cooking pasta underneath, that guy's gone completely they're like times at times so get mean <laughs> times get crazy with food so let me, let me ask you now now you're in you're in athens right i am in athens because uh i've got uh I, I was i got here and the pandemic you know got me stuck here oh really yeah i usually go back and forth but you didn't I, get a chance to go back or you just you chose like, okay, I'll stay here. Well, I, uh, it's a little bit less heavy here, the situation. Okay. Okay. We're doing a little bit better because it's a smaller country. Okay. And you know, we don't meet as much as Italians. When this whole thing started, I said, they are eating together. They're having aperitivo together. Then they're eating together at night. Italians, they really get together to eat. Yeah. And with their family members. And I remember, you know, on TV, on Italian TV, they were like, just don't eat together, stay home and don't go to grandma and grandpa because you're going to kill them. It yeah. was like, it was obvious that that's why there was such a bad pandemic at the beginning because people would drop off their kids at the grandparents, you know, old fashioned way and grandparents would get sick. So. Yeah, and I feel, I feel I could be wrong, but I feel like Italy can't handle a lot of people getting sick. You know, like they don't have the infrastructure for that. No. That's why this, this, this hurt them so much. But I was gonna ask you the food related question about like how Italian food is in Greece. I mean, because it's the same like Mediterranean kind of like cooking. Well, I've got something here. Look, it's here on the table. Look at this tomato. Yo, that's a real tomato right there. I mean, look at this. I mean, they're like, this is like 
they're here on the table. That, that just gave me that just gave me memories because you know where we where we come from in Italy, my nonna had a farm. So you go to a supermarket now, every tomato is perfect round. Yeah. That's what tomatoes are supposed to look like right there. This is, they need they I say to people on Instagram and social media, I'm like, the ugliest the tomato, the better. The the tastier they are. I mean, it smells like a real tomato. And what happens is I'm comfortable here in Greece. It's like being in the south of Italy. It's really the same. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, it's not Italy and I miss my family and it's insane. You know, I haven't seen my family in over a year. Like, uh, it's crazy. Uh, the thing is that, you know, we are closer than ever because of this situation and my need to go back to Italy, like you were saying, you know, when you're going to be a little bit older, it's like, I know I want to die in Italy. I don't, you know, I just need to be close to my roots and, uh, and I want to do a business with food actually. And, yeah. you know, send food all over the world and i love tomatoes so much that i'm thinking to do something with tomatoes and we used to have a farm as well like you're not I, I could i could picture that like i could picture you doing that what i was going to say like right now if you clean that tomato cut it up put a little olive oil a little oregano it'll be the best thing ever it's like amazing you guys i mean look i'm gonna show you guys how it's supposed to look this tomato it opens it just splits right open without yeah. a knife you know that's it yeah. that's it it's like if it's hard and you yeah and then all the juices come out it's completely different the juice is coming out don't buy those tomatoes and it's better to buy canned tomatoes that are from Italy, you know, yes. some Marzano type tomatoes. Yes. Yes. And they sell them everywhere in New York, in America, you know, like they have passata di pomodoro. It's just much better than to buy the fresh tomatoes that are just not from the Mediterranean. Right. The, peel, the peeled tomatoes in the can, San Marzano are hundred percent better than beef steak potato uh, tomatoes that you get in the store. hundred percent. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent and they're you know they're important since uh, ages i mean and you have the best brands you know in new york and you know america in general you guys have everything so it's just much better to buy the tomato in the can and in the summer maybe in the you know maybe there are places that in the summer they have good tomatoes but in the winter just forget about it yeah. Like you have to wait for the summertime and don't put the tomatoes in the fridge. Tomatoes have to be outside of the fridge yeah. always. When, when they're in the fridge, they like become so different. I feel like um, the juices in them like become like, it, it like shrivels the tomatoes in the fridge. Right? Well, you know how hot it has to be for a tomato to grow, right? Because yeah. you're from Salerno. I mean, yeah. it has to be really hot. So the to tomato needs heat. Yeah. And it's not to stay in, a, in, a, in an environment where it's warm. If you put them in the fridge, first of all, they create water, which destroys the tomato. Yeah. And even cherry tomatoes, so that they're all over the world, uh, it's better... It's better to just, you know what? I would do this. If you have a little balcony, I would even grow my own tomatoes in the summer. And I used to have tomatoes up on my roof in little Italy. <laughs> Is that like almost every Italian house has that little row of tomatoes on the side, you know? And the yeah. basil. And the basil. basil. Yeah. Yeah, or basil. You can have your own basil at home. Just buy a plant and have a little basil at you home. Take a leaf, a leaf a day, you know. Exactly, and and use uh, you know, like you said, the ones in the can or the passata. It's just so much easier. And forget about the butter. So we said a, a lot of stuff. Yeah, I think I think we said a lot. Listen, I'll, I'm gonna end this. I'm gonna ask you one more thing. After okay. Everybody, make sure to ch check out Dorothea on Instagram. Her cooking videos are amazing.